In this video and the next couple of videos, I want to look at user roles. Anybody that has login details to your dashboard will have a user profile and each user profile will be assigned a user role. So for example, there's me in the middle and my role is administrator. I've got somebody called Jack who I've set up as an author and we have Alice who is an editor. But why do we have these different roles? Well, the truth is that different roles make our WordPress dashboard more secure. And that's what we're going to be looking at in the next video, the different roles that are available. But to give you an idea, I'm an administrator. That means I can do everything within the dashboard. I have complete access to all the settings of the dashboard. Alice, as an editor, has a limited selection of features that she can access, mostly related to publishing content. And then Jack will have even fewer permissions, allowing him to create new content, but not an awful lot else. So let's have a look at all of the roles that are available by default in WordPress. When you're managing WordPress, there are a lot of different tasks you need to complete. And if you're an administrator, you can complete them all. But you might like to delegate or you might like to hire someone who's perhaps just creating content for you. And you don't want that person to be able to log into the dashboard and be able to install themes and plugins and deactivate stuff and do all sorts of configuration settings. You only want them to be able to go in there, write the content and either save it as a draft or you might want to give them the role or the capability to publish posts as well. And WordPress roles are designed to do this. They are designed for us to be able to create users who have different capabilities and that way you can define exactly what they're going to be able to do. The advantage of this is that your WordPress dashboard is going to be a lot more secure. Let's go over to users and we've seen these example users that I've shown you before. And let's go and click on add new. And this is where you'd fill in the details. Then you come down to the role selector and WordPress has these five roles by default. You may see more in there. For example, if you're running multi-site WordPress, you might see a super administrator. And if you've installed, let's say the Yoast SEO plugin, you're going to have a couple of SEO roles in there as well. But for this lecture, these are the default subscriber, contributor, author, editor, and administrator. And each of these roles have different capabilities within WordPress. In the last lecture, we looked at the default roles in WordPress and briefly went through the capabilities of each of those roles. In this lecture, I'd like to show you how you can create your own roles in WordPress. And for that, we're going to use a plugin. And this is the plugin we're going to use, User Role Editor. So if I go over to my plugins, unfortunately, right at the moment, if I search for, let's click on Add New. If I search for Role Editor in the dashboard, I'm getting an error message. Okay, so what I've done is I've gone over, clicked through to the user role editor, clicked on the download link, and now I can upload the plugin. So let me just choose it. And we're going to install and activate. Once it's activated, you'll find the user role editor under the users section. And when you go over there, one of the existing roles will be selected and it will have check marks next to the capabilities of that user. Now this is a subscriber. So you'll remember that all a subscriber can do is read posts. And if you look down here, there we go, read posts. Fortunately, most of the capabilities that you see with these checkboxes are fairly self-explanatory. If you do need to know a little bit more about what these capabilities do, then over on the WordPress site, there is an article called Roles and Capabilities. And you can see the URL up the top there. If you scroll down here, you'll get a list in the sidebar of all the capabilities. And then also you'll get capabilities listed under the different roles. So you can have a look and see what each of those do. So let's take an example. Let me go back and I'm going to go over to all my users and see who I've got. And I've got Jack, who is an author. Now, what if Jack, rather than being an author, what if I was hiring him to do some work on themes? 
maybe themes and plugins, let's say. Well, we can create a role that will give him the ability to go in and use themes and plugins area, but not anything else. So what we can do is we can go in and we can create a new role. We can base the new role on an existing role. So if Jack happens to be an author and I want to also give him access to themes and plugins, I can do that. I can select author as the base capability. And when we click on add role, look, we can say, make a copy of author and then we'll call this the theme guy or something. And then he'll have all the author capabilities plus any additional ones I want to give him. But for this example, let's suppose he's only being hired to do themes. So I would base it on subscriber. So he has the ability to log in his user profile. He can read posts, but nothing else. Okay. So let's create the role and we'll base it on the subscriber. The role name, I'm going to call him theme guy. There is no, you can't put spaces in there and call it theme guy for display role name. And we're going to base it on the subscriber and we're going to click add role. And now you can see we've got theme guy selected. And if I scroll down, the only capability he has is to read. That's because we based it on the subscriber, but I want to give him access to themes. And rather than search down here for anything related to themes, we've got a list of all the capabilities over in the left and they're organized quite conveniently. So I can select themes and say, right, I want to give Jack access to all those themes. I also want to give him access to plugins because sometimes when you're working with themes, you need to install certain plugins to get it all working properly. And then let's just click on update. Oops, click on yes. And you'll see now that my theme guy role is now saved with all of those capabilities. All right, let's go back and we're going to go over to the all users and I'm going to switch Jack from being an author. Scroll down to theme guy. Let's save that. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to log out and I'm going to log back in as Jack. So let me just select Jack's login details, log in, and then we're only going to have access to those capabilities that we defined in the last section. So we have the appearance with themes, so you can do anything to do with themes and he has access to plugins, but he doesn't have access to anything else. So that's how you can create your own roles to fine tune the capabilities you give to your users.